The auto worker strike in its day, its fourth day, the latest offer from Stellantis rejected by the union. David Barnson is with me. It's going to stay for the entire nine o'clock hour. Any impact on stocks at all? Well, look, the futures are totally flat here this morning, and even Ford and General Motors are up or down about nine cents. Five, they're barely moving. I think a lot of that stuff is priced in. There's going to be a lot bigger impact. I have a lot more to say on the whole story, but as far as the opening of stocks this morning, no. I want to talk about interest rates because they're rising. What impact on the market from that? And how do you think the Fed is going to raise rates again? Zero percent chance they're going to raise rates this week. The futures market right now is at 100 percent chance, 100 percent of no rate hike. Though what's interesting is it's gotten up to a 70 percent chance of no further hike at all. And so generally the Fed's following the markets on that. The markets are not following the Fed. I'm very skeptical. Remember, these rates that you see a little bit higher this morning, they're still not where they were. They're still down a little bit. The 10 year is near its high, but the short end of the curve is down a little. But that 10 year, well above 430, that implies mortgage rates are going well above maybe seven and a quarter percent. They're at seven and a half now in yes, 30 I'm years. Sorry, yeah. That's right. And yeah. so the question is, is four, three around the high, which it has been, or is the 10 year going up near five? The problem with the 10 year not going to five is that it means that the market doesn't believe there's going to be growth for the next 10 years. It's not an inflation issue, it's a growth issue. My worst nightmare. Yes, sir. A go nowhere economy and go nowhere market. It's not good for years. ratings, but it's also not good for the economy. It's not friend. good for my retirement either. That's, That's right. another story, David. Thank you very much indeed. All right. I want to start off today with uh, ARM, A-R-M. It's day three of trading, and it looks like the momentum has dissipated. It started trading last week. The first trade was 56 bucks a share. Now it's 58. David's with me. What went wrong? Nothing has gone wrong. It, it priced at 51, and so you got a bunch of free money for people that flip out of the IPO. It's just speculators that rented the stock for two days and sold it. So they had a gamble, and they won on the gamble, made a few bucks, now they get out. Ultimately, you got to remember, they only released to the public a very small amount of shares, so they're holding supply back. And so it's a long story here what's going to happen, but these IPO gambling speculative things in the first few days, they don't reflect any real fundamentals. And they're not for you. Well, they're definitely not for me. We're investors. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> not speculators? No. Oh, you've got a nice ribbing in there. Yes, sir. <laughs> speculators. <laughs> Listen to this one. The Wall Street Journal reports that Tesla and Saudi Arabia are in early talks for an EV factory over there. The Crown Prince has wanted that for years. Tesla wants to sell 20 million vehicles by 2030. Last year, they sold 1.3 million. Uh, what are you looking at, David, on Tesla? Well, they're certainly not going to sell that many by 2030 if they don't go more global. And so being having things manufactured in other parts of the world is a big part of that growth strategy. Stock is up huge this year. And the whole play on it has always been that it won't just be an automaker, that there's a whole battery play that will have bigger utility. So it's very difficult to price. It isn't a name we own. And most of the names I talk about on the show, dividend names that we sure. own. But Tesla's a company we follow quite a bit. Is Tesla a winner from the auto strike? Oh, absolutely. And it's also, in a weird way, a cause of the auto strike or, or related to because there's so much pressure from the administration on the big three to do more in electric and, and less in combustion engines. All right, David, let's move on to Micron. It's gaining ground this morning, at least it was when I had last checked, but not much, 50 cents. Deutsche Bank has upgraded them to a buy. They've got, uh, they, Deutsche says, look, uh, Micron has pricing power on their chips, and that pricing power is going to hit an inflection point, whatever that means. They raised the target price to 85 bucks a share from 65. That's Deutsche, and the stock is up all of 69 cents this morning. Any comment of any kind? No, it's just a space that's very difficult to price. So you have one analyst, Deutsche Bank, coming out today saying they think it has room to grow more. Pricing power is what you need. But I got to say, I think a lot of these things, it's already reflected in the stock price. Very much. Technology company Cisco, another round of layoffs. They're dropping 350 jobs. Last time around, they dropped 4,000 jobs. The stock is dead flat on this. But this is one of your dividend picks. Yes, we've owned it for quite a long time, done very well with it. We're big believers into the future. They've had modest layoffs. I think cost cutting is an important part of what they have to do. But really, they're in a position to make a lot of money on old technology, networks, servers, routers, and they have this new software subscription service that's their growth engine. We really like what they're doing a lot. Back in the days of the dot-com bubble, late 1990s, yeah. Uh, I remember Cisco far higher price. Well, it went to $85 for a few weeks. It had been up in the 80s, came all the way back down to single digits. 
And uh, then now we started buying it around 15 or 20 and have owned it over the years. And their dividend growth over the last 10 years is exactly in line with their stock growth. And I will point out that Cisco in the late 90s and NVIDIA right now have a lot in common. Do they now? Oh, very much. I'm working on an article about it. I'll share with you. Oh, okay, you do that. Uh, what dividend does Cisco pay? About 3.5% yeah. and growing uh, 8% per year. How about H&R Block? That's another of your picks. Yeah, just because of uh, the tax season right now, everyone's doing their extensions, and California filers still haven't filed taxes yet. A lot of people don't know that. The IRS Why? didn't make anyone in California file in April because of the rain earlier in the year. What? No penalties, no interest. They just simply didn't have to make a payment or file taxes until October 15th. And I I just feel like the rest of the country deserves to know yeah. uh, what happened to Californians. <laughs> but regardless, uh, H&R Block is, I think, a uh, very fairly priced company. It's less than $6 billion size of a company, and they pay a 35 4% dividend that they've been growing for 20 years. I'm not happy with that break for Californians. Well, a lot of people are not, but uh, you know what? The truth will set you free. People need to know what's going on. <laughs> well done, Eddie. I think uh, people should be appalled that California got that. Dividend. Absolutely. Uh, General Mills, another dividend play. Yes, and this stock, is, we just entered it recently, and a lot of times I talk to you about companies we've owned for a long time. General Mills is down 21% on the year, and it was down, it was up quite a bit last year. But, you know, they own these brand names and Cheerios and haagen and Pillsbury, big, well-known consumer brands. Now you're also talking about a great dividend grower, and we love the sector. So I wanted to throw that in there today. What does it pay? General Mills being also above a 3% dividend, growing at about 6 7% per year. I'm sorry, but I prefer a 5% yield on a one-year treasury. Well, here's the thing. What happens when that one-year treasury is yielding 0% in one year? Now, you got 5% for one year, yeah. and then you have to do something different, where what we're trying to do is buy things that over time are growing that dividend. You're going to get a lot more than 5% for a lot longer of a time period. You got out of that one quite well, I'd say. Uh, truth will set you free. <laughs> Good one, David. DA Jason Williams has assembled a task force composed of AI experts who will use the technology to gather evidence on suspects. What do you think? that, David? Uh, I'm for any method of uh, fighting crime, including just regular intelligence. So artificial <laughs> or sense, otherwise, maybe? I think there's a lot of low-hanging fruit we could do to fight crime. Maybe we need those drones from Blake it Resnick. Seems right? like it'd be a good idea. It works for me. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for the hour. My pleasure.